All right, this and this. Oh boy, trigger, trigger, trigger. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Love here and today I present you the highest win rate Demir right now in standard. So if you like Demir and if you like laddering and if you like counter spells, this is the perfect deck for you and it has lots of wear of faces that will get showcased very nicely today. So guys, it will be interesting, we will play very competitively today. So I hope you will have fun, give a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of you know content and yeah, have fun guys. Well this hunt is pretty interesting, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we will have to choose between Make Disappear and the Pat. We will see what the matchup is. Alright, live game. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Scrap that thought. I thought it's a, it's a Painland. Alright. So, a cutdown probably. I mean, this is an extremely good cutdown. If they hit right on the next turn after these triggers, or even now after these triggers, we wouldn't be able to hit it anymore. Yep, 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 yep. So, uh, what do we go for? Is it the bat? I think it's Lazav, because we can get rid of the blockers and basically wear them. Okay, that sounds weird, but that's what Lazav does. Right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the hobby of the day. Uh, oh, of course they have another. All right, definitely extremely good for them. Drawing cards, nice draw, nice draw. So, Preacher of the Schism is a little bit more uh, efficient mana-wise, right? But they shouldn't have much more. You know what? You know what? We can just go like this. Having clue can be important late game. And I want to be a little bit reactive here. Because we, ca we have good answers depending on how they play. A bat. A bat of doom. Alright. Alright. You get your bat. Of course we kill it first. And the ward actually kinda hurts. That's the second one I'm paying. However, Lazaf will do a lot of work this game. We don't have too much mana to use clues, so we probably don't get too much benefit. But we already removed two engines for them for the value. Uh, when you remove uh, the value engine from the live game deck, they only get live game, and that doesn't matter as much. Like that, this is the reason why I always play all those live game synergies. Otherwise, it just doesn't really do much. Now they know we can bat them. Never mind. <laughs> all right. That's an interesting one. Alright, let's make some clues. Definitely not the best value in the world. They can actually race us right now. So we need to change the board state a little bit. Now they know our full options. So if we don't do anything, they just play land and, you know, they get ahead. I guess I can take clu two clues. But I think we need Preacher, we need some, you know, pressure, because Lazaf itself uh, is not, like, it's not for the situation. It's giving Ains extremely good value, but we don't need value right now, we need more pressure. Because he's get recovering with those draws very well. Alright, so everything will be unblockable, but not for our creatures, because they also have to power, right? Oh, this is, this is a nice draw. But man, we don't have too much life. We'll get the life linkers though. I'm not sure about the Lazaf attack. Hmm. We definitely attack with this guy, but do we attack with Lazaf as well? Then they double block. We kill this. I'm not sure, man. I don't really want to attack, to be honest. They want to trade, right? They they will get a decent trade here. 
but they can raise. All right. We won't be able to block, so I think we kind of have to go for this. And sure, let's go for the cut down. The lifelink core will help a little bit. Oh, I guess we can block, right? Man, I for some reason I thought you cannot block like all together, but I still think. Oh, really? That seems like a good deal to me. Like I just got two extra cards basically. Okay, May maybe he has another one or something. That will. All oh, right, solved. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. But still. They will just get the same value they already had in the board, so it's not the worst, and they use their main card. Like, this is their huge value engine, right, for the, for the deck. It's hard to raise them overall, but we have ways to go, you know, about it. And uh, the, car, the bats are super slow win con, but they are win con. But I think we will draw a short at some point, right? With the fortress it will get so much faster. Fortunately, we have those preacher tokens, so they might be useful at some point. That's actually fine. I don't think it's a huge deal, to be honest. So I could... Well, man, in 29 we need to win the value game. We cannot raise them, I think. Yeah, I think we definitely need to hit this. And we'll see what happens. I want two counters. Alright, I will keep it just to make sure that I get the value. And we have make disappear, right? Or a clue. Do I want a master? A mastermind is okay. It can block, right? Yeah, it has two power. So, now we can go like this. And honestly, they should double block probably. I don't think we go with Lazaf anymore. We need to keep it to keep blocking those two. Because we will be under a lot of attack. Honestly, they might double trade versus this. Three lifelink is a lot. Alright. 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 Fortress. Sure. Good deal for them. Definitely good deal. So they will attack with those three probably, I would guess. And that's a lot of damage, man. Those map tokens are really <laughs> all right. It triggers twice. True, true. That's that's a lot of damage, man. We of course can do this, and well, if we go for this, we lose it. So it's not worth it, I think. I think we can outvalue them in a way, but I might be wrong. We'll see. Let's keep drawing some cards. We can unlock all of those cards right at some point. We don't explore this turn, so no no reason to go for it. Alright, a little bit too many lands, but it's fine. It's fine. Alright. So, this will be a menace for us, that's for sure. But if they attack again, we just go for the reef, right? Okay, definitely those two. They cannot really attack with the bats, because then we play the mastermind, they know about it. If they attack with the fortress, for the triggers, we block with this. Yeah, I think... I think this is the attack. And we keep making dudes, and they will lifelink at some point very nicely. Back to 10. And we will know if they attacked with Fortress or not when they declare attackers, so we can decide if we go for Mastermind. Or well, this is insanely good, man. Alright. We don't want this solved at all. And they might solve it in one turn, right? Because they can activate the Fortress. But they will lose it to Reef, so that's a decision for them. Is it worth it? They don't have too many creatures in the graveyard because we exalt everything. And this is one time thing, right? Creature cards gain, so they gain moment this is solved. So they don't really get the value here. And as you can see, they are not going for the fortress. They know about the block, so they are going with the, the one that ma matters less. But honestly, I think it's the same, right? Because then I'm playing the bat, and even though it doesn't hit the hand, it still pro protects against the other bat. 
Let's go to blockers. And we are not giving him the cards. We don't care. We would draw two, he would draw one, but with all those screws, I have more value. I don't need to give him any cards. And as you can see, I'm getting my cards back. And finally, man, it took a while, right? It really took a while. We decline, but we can go for the path. One, not, not a good draw. Second, maybe. Like, we want removal and this kind of stuff, you know? But you can, you can feel that we are getting back into the game super hard. Here it is. Here it is. So we now have Ertai in the hand. And that's kinda huge. Ertai counters. Man, we are looking really nice. Alright. We, I think we won. I think we won. We just need to not mess it up. Okay, so if they activate the fortress, they only have two mana, then I kill the Denlay, right? Probably. Let's keep making stuff, because I like stuff. And we keep those four for a block, in case we need it. Like, we are getting really ahead right now. They might get the bat. Oh, maybe I should attack with Razav just for the exile. I missed this part. It's fine. It's fine. They might want to solve the case and play the bat. But it will cost them a little bit. And we can always just uh, counter the effect from this, because Ertai works in a different way. It can counter abilities like this. So no, worst case, they draw a card. Sure, that would be a great draw, because it locks them out of the game. Veteran, definitely not what they wanted. But it's still something, you know? It's still something. So it will trigger quite a lot of life gain. Three. Important. So they can get, they can flip it, but they need to waste the fortress, and fortress is extremely powerful with Denley. So they kind of don't want to waste it. We also have the Death Toucher here, and it, I think they know about it. Here's your honk. Uh, I think they know about it because every time we keep the mana, they stop uh, activating the fortress. So I think they are considering their options, and their options aren't amazing right now. And you can see that Preacher of the Schism attacking every turn, like, look at this board. If not this passive, we would just have two creatures and we would be losing on board nearly. And now look at us. Oh, do they rope? Did we make another deck rope with this? <laughs> oh man, the ropers are still here for some reason. All right, let's cut the video. All right, guys, I think we made another tier one deck, Absurd Europe and Rage Quit. So, all right, we are doing something right. And I'm not very surprised. At this point, you can see that they are kinda out, right? And my turn. So, I think we kill this, so we get the air tie. Yeah, let's take the air tie. That means that whatever happens, we are in a good spot. And we don't need to play it anymore. We just keep it as a, you know, insurance policy. We use the Mirex. Well, not really, we just play this. And we probably get the, the new rope. All right, look at this. Is that the explosion? I think that should be the explosion, right? Yep, yep. Man, we did it. And the funny part, look how long it took to take all those Lazav clues. And we drew all of those cards and they got so, us so ahead. All right, well, this, this is a good draw, man. We are on the play as well. So this will be super interesting. I think we go with the, with the boat, right? So we play this into this into boat, then they play whatever, we play the bat, and we can already crew the boat. And that's where we get the advantage. And when, man, geeks with the boat is so insane, right? It basically has haste in a way. All right, let's see, let's see. This will be some good, good. You need, you need to power honk, all right? I need you to power honk on this one. All right, this changes a little bit. I expected something that isn't a mono red. I know, silly me. But I still think we'll go with the boat. It's a slow setup. Man, I'm playing two drop on the play and I'm saying that it's a slow setup. Man, standard got such insanely quick. It's, man, it's like a, one of the eternal formats in a way. But I mean, that's kind of what you get for longer rotation, right? You get more power in, the, in every slot, which makes every deck way more powerful on average. You know, especially the decks that try to only win and, you know, be super boring. 
All right. Adver wow, you needed to think a long time for this one, huh? <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. I tell you, man. Uh, we kind of have to go with this. I mean, this is the optimal play. This is the optimal play. Uh, do we go with the boat? We will get so much damage on the next turn, man. We will get so much damage. We can block Kumano for monsters, right? I don't know, man. I'm not sure how to play it. It's a very hard situation. They they have the perfect curve so far. Let's see if they also have Godric. The sign of a true master of magic. The problem is that with monsters rage, they can get any trait to you know give them huge advantage, or they can just lightning strike. However, this is probably one of the better situations because now they are fully tapped and we know exactly that we are losing the boat, and that means they cannot really attack. So they kind of messed it up, to be honest. I think like it, it wasn't a very good play overall. Now we go with this. And we check their hand. Oh. Oh. That's awkward. So what does it mean? I still think we go for it. Man, like, come on. Like, you know what will happen. So, uh, we go with this because we want to keep growing it. So we get better lifelink. Well, if I attack, I don't get the best deal out there, huh? Did I think it through? Probably not so much. I was super excited about the lifelink. But they need to triple block, right? So it means we trade against adversary. And we have the reef. You know what? I think we can we can make it. I think it's worth it. I really don't want to hit the land. Thank you. Thank you, Magic, for being cool. All right, that's huge. If I drew a land, that would be a, a huge whiff. So they can triple block. Or, I mean, they don't need to triple, but the most important card is this, and they they want to trade with those, and they cannot, because it's only 3 power. So either they go all in and give us the card we need, or they don't block at all, which makes them lose in the long run. They have to sacrifice the adversary, they don't have a choice. I wonder... Oh, they chickened out. They chickened out. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Because on the next turn, we will start growing our cool butt. And we still keep the reef. That's a lot of damage, don't get me wrong. But that's not game winning damage. Oh, they drew a monster straight. Wow. Well, if you are good at magic, then you are. Man. It's good they printed this card, huh? We all are super happy about it. All right, so I can go with the Reef or just go with Geeks. I can live gain three a turn. I can live gain three a turn. Yeah, I think we just keep it. We play this. We will get hit by four a turn if they go for it. I mean, it's super tempting to explore, but I don't think we have luxury to do it right now. I don't think we can. We definitely attack with this. Do we attack with this one as well? Or keep it for crewing the schooner? I think we attack with the, with the one. Listen. Listen. <laughs> I know. Alright, <laughs> I know. I'm greedy, what can I say? I'm greedy. I'm drawing cards against Monoret with, you know, triple creatures. So Kanzan, alright. I can live with this. Not a whiff. But also not the best draw ever. Full swing. The classic Monoret. So I can kill two and we get to one. That's pretty low. But it's a good value overall. Let's get there. This and this, right? With the life gain, we can do a lot. Where the trigger comes? Oh, we can keep crewing. We can double crew it. So the bat has a friend on the boat. One. It's more than enough, alright? <laughs> I'm not scared, you are scared. Alright. 
do you play around or you don't? Man, this is the peak of monorail decision making. It might, take, it might take them years to decide if they want to play this. Oh man, they actually play the land. <laughs> and they complain about control taking long to take turns. At least we have decisions, you know? Alright, so what do we go for? Uh, we definitely go for those two. And we keep the rest to keep the blocking uh, no, up. Listen. I'm greedy, but even I have my limits, all right? <laughs> like we are we can lose by one life right now, so we don't we don't want to draw more. Like especially that it's just a lightning strike, you know, top deck. Well they drew a card and they play a card. Well that's and that that's something. Do they see the reef? I'm not sure if they did, because they only get one damage and they lose a lot in the board. I mean a lot. Well, I guess they get two damage, but they're losing their best cards. So we are at one, I believe, right? Which is great. I don't need more. Because we're like getting three a turn and they're whiffing every turn. Like they're sacrificing their whole board just to, to, get, to get this extra damage every turn. And now... Now... We go with this. One, two up to five and you can see their board is shrinking every time not yet we have plays we, we are okay two blockers and most of their top decks don't deal enough damage we can also make mirex so we can triple block and that means on the next turn we can start yeah man we did it they weren't super aggressive and I think they did it too fast. You need whiteboard if you sacrifice creatures just to get damage through. You want as many creatures as possible. And they went like too greedy too fast, I think. All right, guys, we're going first. We will take a lot of pain from this pain land because I think we drew all the Mirexes from our whole deck. But it's fine. It's fine. We will get there. Well, this will probably die, but we still go for it. Okay, no response. So, I mean, we can get... Okay, this is actually pretty important. So, when we get rid of the bat... And yeah, I know that we could uh, just cut down the bat, right? Now we don't have targets. However, that means we get extra card. Never mind. Never mind. Well, that's a pretty good blocker, isn't it? That's a pretty perfect blocker, but you know what? I think we can make it work. I think we can make it work because now they will play some uh, tree drop, right? And we have Shelly to destroy their Shelly. So if we keep drawing more cards, it could be okay. Uh, I will definitely find myself. We need to get some good cards though. Uh, I mean, the Restless Reef is pretty nice. So I think what we do, he doesn't have removal unless he drew it, right? Man, that will be a lot of life. We swing, we live game, we draw a card, we absolutely pay life. And yeah, this is a reef. Alright. Alright. Shelly? Can't hurt. It also punishes us for drawing cards, of course. So it's a very good play for our opponent. However, however, we can do stuff around it. And they need removal for every of them. Alright, so right now drawing cards doesn't hurt us. And the bat is insanely good. Absolutely. Fair mastermind. Alright, it's close. It's close. So right now he extremely needs removal. He like is longing for removal. If he draws it, he's in a very good spot. All right, that's not bad for us. And we definitely play cut down in response. This way, and uh, they cannot interrupt us. And right now they only have two mana, so I don't think they ha should have go for the throat. It should be everything, but they have priority. Oh, that was a combat phase problem. Alright. Having Shelly 
in the port is so important. Alright, important turn, because we can start attack attacking with the reef. We can absolutely keep attacking with the reef. I really think we should be aggressive right now. They have some stuff in the graveyard, but they probably won't have enough time to play it. If they trade for shouldered, it's actually better for us. Uh, do we want to mill them? I don't think milling will make any difference this game, to be absolutely honest. I will mill myself. Like, you know, it can be that we get rid of the good cards from the top, which sucks, or we can get rid of lands from the top, which is great. You don't know, so it's on average the same, like net zero. And Man, no way they actually drew it. No way. Man, every time they just have the card, I'm super surprised they played it like this. Absolutely. Oh, we can go for the Siren. Actually, this makes a difference. Man, like every time when there's one card that saves them, they just have it. Man, it's so hard to play. <laughs> All right, all right, sure. So they get the master. I think we still win, but that was a huge blow. And I'll tell you exactly what's what's so weird about it. Uh, they had Shelly in the board. And they could kill our Shorded. What they should have done, I think, is get a, some good block, kill Shorded. And I'm not sure, maybe I missed something. Anyway, uh, so what do we do? What do we do? Uh, this one is important. We need to kind of hit it. Uh, we d we want non land. That's perfect. That's a very good scry, and we got the counter which we needed. So now if we attack, we get some really nice value. And I'm keeping Karatai because the board is looking great for us. So they will double block. And do we want to save geeks right now? They don't have too much in the board. Did I play a land this turn? So if I draw untapped land, and I can, uh, then I can play uh, the mastermind as well. I think it's worth it. Right now they don't have too many outs. We absolutely destroy something. Is it the underdog or the bat? I, I mean it doesn't matter, right? We kill it. Then we draw a card here, and they are absolutely like binded to the stop deck because they are losing in the board right now. All right, we are going first. This can be interesting. Make, man, I like make this appear. For some reason, this card makes me just warm and fuzzy. All right, we have a decent curve. Uh, not on turn two, on turn two, unfortunately, but on the next ones. And against mono red, make this appear will be absolutely useful. Uh, oh man, it's really tempting to go for the bat. Now we go breacher first. Sure, that is uh, the key to this matchup. So we need to fight the battle on this, and this is the last drop that you know, just grand final. All right. Oh, you want to do it? <laughs> well, and they always fall. Like going this play into Demir mana is crazy, man. Like two two mana Demir is like basically the synonym of removal, you know. And now we can go Preacher, and we can start making some cool stuff. So they have an instant, and this is play with fire. Because earlier he had a creature, so I thought it's most strange. But when I played this, there were no creatures on board, and he still had priority. So this is a play with fire, we need to remember. I will forget it in 10 seconds when I switch the topics, but it is play with fire. Interesting one. Probably a good choice here. So. We know they have play with fire, and there's high chance one of those is a lightning strike, right? Because they drew so many cards, and you play burn last. So if I play Shelly, there is huge chance uh, Cheryl that will die. Listen. They will take the damage, of course. So, uh, if I play Lazav, I can counter their next play, and they cannot really attack. And if I draw remo any kind of removal, I can attack Squid. So it's not a, a bad turn. 
I think we start with the bat, check their hand and then place Shelly. Because already, like look at this, we are at 19. They have no board pressure right now really. Jig, sure. It's annoying, but we can deal with it. I think they are low bowling. Oh yeah, yeah, here you go, the main play. They thought they will get us on the on the cheek. And now they still cannot attack with Squee. It's not worth one token. Yeah, here's your one damage for the turn. Enjoy, my friend. And that's an interesting one. Uh, so we are even, so the value we are getting is absolutely crazy. How are you working? I, I need to check it. Exile card, yeah, investigate, so we will. Uh, sacrifice the crew. Uh, Exalt. What are the cards? Cheek. And that's it. Alright. Alright. This and this. Oh boy. Trigger, trigger, trigger. <laughs> and let's go for the cheek. I, get, I mean, why not, right? They are 3 mana. And yeah, they have 2 creatures. They can play 1 drop with haste and get the cheek back. So it's actually beneficial. So we got a creature. We drew a card and we exile their stuff. And we have two lifelinkers, just to make sure. Not the best draw here, but the crew will be super useful. Man, when Lazav hits, it's pretty devastating. Like, it does so much. And our opponent <laughs> is a classic mono red. When they are not on the play, they are not happy, because suddenly they need to play a game, and it's not so easy anymore. All right, he clicked the button. All right, uh, so do we go with Shelly? I think we check their hand first. This should be enough disruptive on three cards. Here's the play with fire we were talking about. And I don't think we like Godric here. I think we don't like Godric here. Because if they don't draw a land, if they play play with fire, they cannot go with the bad play. I can still draw a card down, but we will see. And this can be a cheek. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> Imagine being Lazav, wear of faces. And in the end, oh, they of course hit the land. Man, easy. Absolutely easy. I tell you, you just name the card. It's always like this. However, they will still lose because uh, we will play Shelly. They don't even attack with Godric. Are you serious? Really? Why would you not? Look, man, this is Mono Red playing. Like, look at this, they have 4-4 four, four with haste for 3 mana. They don't even use it. Because they probably missed the celebration. They don't know that I don't have blocker. What's going on? Karaniel, I know you play mono red, but what's going on? <laughs> Man, it's, it's not a hard deck to play. How can you misplay it so hard? Like, all you need to do is play creatures first, burn last. And that's kind of it, right? We decline, respectfully. A lot of lands, but we will make it work. Well, let's go for a mirror. So, do they really fear Lazav so much? Is it possible? I mean, I'm just attacking with the Preacher. Perfect. I could live gain, I know. But I could also draw something different. And the game is over. They cannot really attack, man. I can win them on board without shorted, probably. Let's get the, the last card, because it can trigger Celebration easier. I mean, alright. That was such a weird game by them. Swiss World, this is the type of top deck you don't want to see. Well, that's a scoop, honestly. They have no way of winning this game anymore. Even without Charlotte, that we are winning, basically. So we play the Siren. We get the map token on the bat. Because the bat has a lifelink, that's a very nice draw. <laughs> I had one in the hand. I like. I know they could be defensive with Godric, but then there's no chance they are winning this game. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed those tier one decks scooping in Fear of Dimir. So even though this is not my favorite type of Dimir, I'm a more of a control player. I think it's a very good balance of having a very high win rate because this is honestly the highest win rate Dimir right now in standard as I'm recording this video. Uh, but also it has so many control elements, like you have so much removal, many counter spells, especially Erta is so fun. Like you can make such interesting plays. And even though we only play two laws up and it breaks my heart i wanted to go up to four uh, it still contributes so much to the game and having exile effect in the mirror deck is huge usually i include a trespasser for it and now laws up also draws cards, which is better generally. So uh, I honestly wanted to showcase the version of the cloak originally, and I think the cloak version has higher win rate in platinum. So that was a little bit surprising to me, uh, but I tried to get from you know platinum to mythic like stats because a lot of you are like you know in diamond and mythic as well. So this is the best performing version all around. So guys, like enough said. I went for one, uh, so you know it's not a surprise. I think we are uh, kind of guaranteed to get to mythic with this one if you play enough games. So yeah, I mean you know the drill. You have seen similar decks. There are not too many changes. To be fair, I think Lazaf is like the only addition from the new deck. But I'm happy to see Lazaf. Uh, it's especially in the most competitive deck for Dimir. That's so cool. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And guys, tell me in the comments if you like this kind of style of you know more competitive full meta stats uh, videos, or you know you just like Bruce and seeing cards that aren't very used, but you know they are cool and you can make a deck around them which makes it a bit more fun in my opinion but you know uh, I, I'm fine with both I just am curious about your opinion so be sure to tell me in the comments and yeah while we are at it if you aren't subscribed I think this is a good moment it seems you enjoyed the video and yeah thank you guys for being so cool I'm really happy that you are enjoying the channel and many of you for years by now so that's so cool I'm, I'm super happy that you are enjoying it and yeah see you tomorrow guys